Hi, uh, this is Chris from Absolute Music, and today I've got my lovely friend uh, Rob Dean from Akai. How's it going? Very well. How are you keeping? <laughs> not too bad, mate. Not we too keep bad. getting told to we shuffle do. closer not to each other. Not the worst thing in the world. Knees touching. Is it? So that's all right for you. <laughs> Um, so today we're going to go through some features of your new updates you got for we NPC are. Live, X and The Force, is that right? That's correct, yeah. So um, where um, do you want to start? Basically what we'll do, we'll start with um, Live, but there's a lot of things that translate from Force as well. Um, the first feature which goes across both products is the ability to do step and grid automation now. And that really means that you can use the uh, MIDI channel you're on, the plugin you're on, or even some of the CV stuff if you're using Force or X, which has CV capabilities, and then automate it using either a step step sequencer or the grid modes within the uh, within the software. Yep. So let's look at the MPC. So we've got a track we put together. So if we press play, pretty basic. It just has a two note chord progression in there on top of some drums. Okay. Yep. But what we can do because that was programmed using Tube Synth, which is one of the built-in plugins on the NPCs and force, I can then automate the parameters. Indeed. So beforehand, we could do that using the real-time recording of automation, which is fine, but the problem with that is that you could do that and have one mistake at the end of the performance, and that would ruin the whole thing and have to go and yeah, undo it and redo it. Yeah. So now I can do the real-time automation, but then see it, or just draw it in by hand. So if you want to go into the grid now, which is this one here. Indeed. Let's have a look. And then you've got this little thing here, which says velocity. Okay. And that's always been there to control the velocity. And you can see that's the two notes, and that's how loud they are. Brilliant. But now, if I touch on here and press the data dial, Control you can see I've got down. parameters. Excellent. So if I jump down to add new, you can see I've now got two things I can choose from a parameter base. <coughs> okay. You've got track, so that's going to be my panning, my volumes, that sort of stuff. Yep. And then I've got the program. And if you go into there, you can see I've got the mixer. And there's all my sends and and solos, which I can automate. But if I go to plugin, you can see all of my parameters within the built-in synthesizer. Fantastic. So if we look for something like a cutoff yeah, or a filter, yeah, something excellent. like that, yeah, why not? Um, which should be somewhere at the top. Um, low pass filter cutoff. So by clicking on there, you see that I've now got rid of the velocity page and I've moved to the program parameter automation page. Indeed. And now I can use the pen tool, and if you want to draw a little shape on there. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Wonderful. You can see that I've now got a automation shape. Yeah. So if you press play, that should play it back. So you can see that's really easy to do, and it's easy to edit as well. So a way of like bringing up like the whole lot at once, rather than having to go back and um, just shape it in, can you just nod it up? You or? would have to go in and say, right, I'm going to select that area, and once it's selected, yeah. go in and use the encoder and bring it up. But generally, it's designed to be like in a, in a real time, or gotcha. drawing it like a pen. But then you go into the step mode, okay. and you can see, right, let's jump into this and say, right, We've got the cutoff, what we've just done. Now you can see it there. Oh, and yeah. Then you can use this that's to bring them cool. all up, basically. Yeah, that's that's the way yeah, of doing yeah. it, to jump into step mode. Excellent. So that kind of brings us onto step mode quite nicely. Okay. Good segue, strong <laughs> segue. <laughs> yes. And what we've got in here is the same thing. Obviously, right. you're automating things. Yeah. And I've already set up my automation, and you can see the, uh, the, the name of it. But in the step mode, it gives you a few different things which you don't get in the grid mode. Right. Obviously, you've got your pads, so I can step in things and take them out over here. Oh, I see, yeah. I can also control them with the encoders, so bringing them in and out on a step base. Mm -hmm. I can even use presets. So if I know I've got a four bar loop, and at the end of the four bars, I want the effect to make a crescendo, to go up or come down like a filter, yeah. filter sweep, I can use these preset curves. If I just touch that, you can see I've now got a curve, yeah. and that's applied to the part of the bar we're on. So we're on the first part. And if you don't want to use that bit or you've made an error, you hit shift and now you've got clear and clear bar oh, I see. just to take that part out. Yep. This is quite interesting for people using external and CV equipment because you can use it with a MIDI or a CV value, which means you can actually use it as a traditional step sequencer by using the encoders, which is a, it's a nice touch, yeah, um, which applies to a lot of people using Force, MPC Live, MPC X, because mm -hmm. 
it kind of blurs the, the genres. So you can yeah. use it with particular equipment in any way you want to. Mm -hmm. So that kind of covers the um, automation side of things. Uh, so on the automation, mm. uh, you've done the cutoff. If I wanted to add a reverb on there or add a Absolutely. delay, you yeah, can, you can do that. Infinite, well, as, well, as many as you kind of need. Yeah, to a point. So yeah. if you go to menu now, and we're on that track. So yeah. if you want to add an effect onto that channel. Excellent stuff. So we're going back into here, is that we'll right? We'll go into there. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then we go to there, and we're going to go onto the um, that's the plugin program, and yeah. then we we'll go into there and okay. add your effects. Brilliant. So you can either do that or yeah. Add this. And whilst we're on this page, you can see we've updated the plugin menu. So now everything's grouped into type of effects. Beforehand, it used to just be one big long list of effects, and it just makes it quicker to navigate. Brilliant. So if we add a uh, reverb medium, yep. So that's that on there, end. and you can see. Fine, we've got our channel strip there. Brilliant. So if I go back into the grid mode like we were doing before, oh, I see, yeah. click on there, and now I do add new. So we've yep. just done our cutoff. I can see right to track, and now we've got all of the MIDI settings down there. But if I come back to the program, you now see this insert. Gotcha. And that's his reverb. So obviously, Excellent. if you've got four inserts per per sound or per plugin, you can do automation for each. Fantastic. But obviously, if you've got different parameters within that, you can do that as well. Cool. So if we go into here and you say, let's do the mix, uh, the dry wet. Same again, if you want to draw a dry wet curve on there. Yeah. Just a jump to pencil Oh yeah, tool. just get the old pencil go. out. That's it. <laughs> let's give that a shot then. So just play it back. Yeah. It. So now if you wanted to add another parameter from that same insert, just do the same. Add new, plug in, reverb, and then you choose the next bit. So you can say, right, and let's try density. So if you want to choose density, yeah, top one. Indeed. And then use a pencil. Yeah, just, just stick that in. Do that. Yeah, just make <laughs> it really obvious. So you can see how easy it is to do automation. And I think that was a thing which was missing on previous firmwares because mm -hmm. it's such a big deal in production automation. Indeed. And having this available on all of our standalone hardware makes it a lot easier to get into that next step of production. Excellent. As opposed to going from idea to thinking, all right, how can I do this now? It's kind of progressing into a more of a hands-on tactile thing. And doing that <coughs> within the MPC Live is exactly the same technique as you do absolutely, on the Force? Absolutely, on the Force. Same menu, same everything. Same menu, just yep. to show people at home, you go to menu, and if I'm on a step sequencer, let's go to something which I've got a clip of already, like this sample here. In fact, let's go to, let's have a look. In this instance, we're using uh, audio sample, and obviously you can use clips in MPC, but on the force, we're gonna use the audio sample. And on here, if I use the menu here, with the little pop-up menu, like we've done on MPC, and I click the data dial, you can see all of my available parameters. Oh yeah. And I just jump onto there, and you can see I've got a automation curve already set in there. Brilliant. So absolutely the same workflow on Force as it is on MPC, but you've obviously got a different clip window because it has got more audio clip orientated layout, basically. So obviously, Excellent. With Force, you've basically got more of a, a clip workflow. So that's gotcha. the only difference to it, really. Perfect. No, that's excellent. I really like so that. So that was one of the main features, which is great about these new updates. Obviously, yeah. it's 2.6 for the MPC series, and it's 3.03 .03 for Force. No problem. And this feature, which we're about to talk about, is, is going to make a huge difference for Force users and MPC users. But I say Force users first because of the way that you design and create inside of Force. Mm -hmm. um, as of this update, you can use the export feature, which is here and you can export directly to Ableton Live sets. Finally, yes. yes. Which people are very excited about <laughs> yeah, because- that's the best one, yeah. I found using forces amazing to get ideas down. Yeah. But then combining it with an Ableton project, which I'm also an Ableton user, is so streamlined now. Indeed. So all I do is just press on to Ableton Live set, gives you a few options. You can say, right, the, the MIDI is gonna be exported either as an audio of the sounds from Force mm -hmm. or as MIDI. Okay. So, so any of your expansion packs that are stored on your mm -hmm. live or force, it will bring those in and instantly pop them into a library and able yeah, to Yeah, so the, actually the way that will actually work is if it's built into force, it will render it as audio. So it'll right. be an audio clip. Oh, I see. The okay. reason it will say MIDI is if you want to use the files or the chords you've, you've yeah. uh, created inside of force as 
um, the same cords but with a different plugin. That so if I had sense. something like a contact instrument inside of Ableton, sense, I could yeah. then load that onto the channel. Excellent. What I tend to do is do two bounces because I might want to blend the sounds because obviously you've got hype in here, which is a really strong synth. Uh -huh, indeed. And I could take those sounds and then blend it with another synthesizer. Great. Just the best of both worlds. So things like automation <coughs> that you've been doing in here, obviously mm -hmm. they're not going to be exported or could it, you use automation into something of within Ableton and use their repo? Not so that? much. No, so the okay. way that it would work is here is I can actually bypass the effects and the volume and pan settings. Gotcha. So if it's an effect, that will be bypassed on the way out. So you won't get the automation curves. Okay. But if you choose to include it, then it will print it with that. Oh, so I see. That you can take that. It's a good idea being able to use it with um, to export the MIDI file with automation, but that's not something we can do right now on it. Right. So yeah, if you're doing automation over, say, the sample you just did, mm -hmm. it's going to record the automation and yeah, the audio the is going to come out the same. Yeah, because yeah, it's going to have the effect on really? it, so it will print yeah. that. Fantastic. Course, um, yeah. Obviously, you've got your um, settings at the bottom, so bit depth, sample rate, real standard things mm -hmm. for exports. Uh, if you're not an Ableton user, you can use this little feature called All Clips. Ah, see. Same thing, but instead of making an ALS file, which you can just access directly from your SSD or your memory stick it saves to, you can basically just export it the same way, but it gives you a folder, just a, a WAV right. file, basically. So you can just Check go into the folder. Those Pro Tools, whatever you Absolutely. need to. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not excluding any users of people using any other software. Obviously, having Ableton is great because you've got the clips, and that works very well in an Ableton Live setup. But this gives you an option for any, anyone else using that. Wonderful. That's really yeah, good. so it's, it's pretty exciting. Also, it's on MPC Live and X now. Indeed. And the way you do that, very similar. Yeah. But what I tend to do, because your drums are in a sequence or in a track, you want to go into the pen tool. So we're on this drum track, okay. which is here. And then you can see there's a feature to explode, which is just here. And that will basically take all your drum sounds, which are on a kit or a pad, and split it across onto different tracks. Oh, I see. So then yeah, if yeah. I go into my folder here, I've got a little icon here, which says ALS export. And then I've got the same features as I've got on Force, which is great. Fantastic. Yeah. It's really good. I yeah. mean, if, if you're an Ableton user and an NPC user, brilliant. Brings two worlds together. Makes it a lot easier to kind of continue that Indeed. production. And do you think Akai is going to have future involvement with Ableton Live and getting like the sessions viewing well, matching up with clips, or is we that would a, hope so. Yes, this is, a, this is <laughs> one of those secret nods, as in like it's it's coming. Yes, yes. Indeed. I can't say too much, but we were definitely on the way to it. And obviously, we did announce a few times in a couple of videos at NAM showing that technology. So it's definitely on the way. Um, we just obviously can't say when. Okay. I'll have to watch that video. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's somewhere on the millions of different videos at now. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely worth checking That's out. That's brilliant. But you say there's a couple of other updates that you've got in yes, it as well. Yes, so yeah. in, in this, it's kind of, those are the main two we're looking at. Um, there's a few tweaks to force in terms of the way the, the screen or the matrix reacts to okay. touch. Um, beforehand, you can, you delete clips and that's it. Yeah, but it makes it? a lot of sense because with the uh, multi gesture display using the mixer, like obviously, I can use two fingers to adjust. And the, the channels, right? But this time it's using pressure. Oh, I see. Okay. So if I'm using a a clip here, and I want to copy that clip. I can now hold my finger on it. As opposed yeah, to tapping it, I can right. hold my finger on it. Yeah. You can see that it's got a copy, delete, edit clip, edit region, and settings. Gotcha. Just a really convenient way of of getting to those settings because mm -hmm. beforehand you have to go into it and and then access yeah, those parts. Yeah, yeah. And it's even easier, obviously, with deleting stuff. If it's on the launch mode, I can use these quick keys here. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not on there, or if I'm using my notes modes, yeah. that's going to be as a different page. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Menu diving, <coughs> isn't it? Again? I can also yeah. create clips really easily as well, just by pressing that. And then you create it from there, and then delete it and copy it the same. Perfect, yeah. That's a lot better, isn't it? That's, again, workflow things which you can have. Mm -hmm. just make things easier. It's not going to change a lot, but it helps to have just it there. Little bits. Yeah, it is for shortcuts yeah, and things don't like that. Realize it first, and that's yeah. Yeah, really absolutely. Super helpful, yeah. Talking of shortcuts, if I'm using something which is in a scaled or using the notes mode, yeah, I can say right if I'm on this sampled note, whatever that. I've got that in keyboard mode currently, so I'm playing it. It's just a keyboard or, okay. or MIDI keyboard, basically. But if I wanted to change that beforehand, I hit shift and note mode, and I can move through the different note types, I see. obviously chromatic, scale, progressions. Yeah, yeah. But if you're in the middle of changing from one bass sound, which is going to be kind of, I guess, more of a pad driven layout, if I want yeah. to use just the, the, the um, MIDI control type for that, but then I want to move to progressions, 
I'd have to go in and physically change it, and that's quite a long oh, process. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So what I can do is hold notes mode now, right. and you get this little temporary touch screen where I can say, right, I want to jump from piano into scales, and that'll just do it straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, As opposed to yeah, having yeah. to go shift and note mode, it's just, again, a workflow tweak, which makes things a lot easier. And there's a very exciting thing with the scales mode with yes. external MIDI controller yeah, keyboards and that, oh yeah. He's very good at doing your um, segues. My lead into yeah, bits. Yeah, bits. Like bits. practice, that that's right? amazing. <laughs> and on the notes mode, yeah. <laughs> what would happen now is if you go to MIDI input yeah. and you've connected any MIDI controller, which is USB, obviously this takes USB MIDI, yep. so does this. So obviously right, this right. feature is only on force at the minute. What I can do is then tell it to do something with that MIDI input. Sure. At the minute, if I've set it to as played, it will just be playing back the sounds from within force. Mm -hmm. But if I switch it to snap to scale or to filter to scale, it's going to do two things. It's going to let me play with my keyboard in one of the desired scale modes. Yeah. So that means I'm never going to go wrong because it's playing only the correct so, notes. And this is any anything MIDI which transmits a MIDI, yeah. USB, or even external. Obviously, you've got your um, one eight adapters to go to an yeah. external controller, whatever, um, and that means you're going to be in scale, which is great. Yeah. So if I've got a sample in C, and I know I'm going to play in C, and I don't have a lot of musical theory, I can say, right, let's just stick it into the C mm -hmm. and play with it. Shut my mind off, just figure out what sounds nice. Right. The reason there's two modes is that there's filter, which means if I press a note which is out of the scale, it will duplicate the one beforehand. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you're in scale. Snap will just deaden the key, so okay. you just can't press it. Yeah, yeah. That so makes just sense. Press it yeah. So that's, again, a really interesting feature which is going to change a lot of people's yeah, that's good. production. My things. music theory is still, so, after all these years, really, really yeah, bad. It's <laughs> yeah. One of the things, you'll do it later. You'll do it later. <laughs> but this it will appeal to both people who are very good at the theory, because like I said, shut the brain off, just yeah. listen to the sound, or people who are very new to it can mm -hmm. just be like, right, let's just, just play with it and see what, what comes out of it. Excellent. So obviously, we've talked about the automation, the Ableton stuff, a few of the workflow tweaks. Mm -hmm. Included in that, there's a real quick key group um, command now. So if I'm using a drum kit and I've got a sample like, just try something like that. Yeah. If I want to stretch that across the keypads and use it with a piano or, or use it in different notes, I can now hit shift, yeah. edit, and then that pad. And that will directly move that sample into its own key group. Right, I see. So if I jump over here. Is it just for pitch, or can you do it for like volume and That just else? basically takes it and puts it into a key group. Okay. Once it's in the key group, yeah. what I can do is actually change it or modulate it however I want to. Okay. So the sample is basically just been taken into a key group, and now I can use it like I did with any other key group sample. I see, yeah. And then I can stack it up, I can mm -hmm. use the velocities, the filters, and envelopes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I personally find that's really useful because if you use some of the um, content from the packs, mm -hmm. the expansions, there's some really strong kits, but they're mostly hits. It's so so like a bass tone or something like that. And this is great because I can start a drum pattern yeah, and yeah, then I can yeah. just say, right, that, let's do that in a different note and then play it back in whatever way you want to do it. That was a, quite an interesting update for me personally because that's how, mm -hmm. I, how I work. Rob, thank you ever so much for coming Pleasure. down. That's brilliant. Uh, it's Chris from Absolute Music. Thanks ever so much for watching.